The Intergalactic Peace Treaty of 2345 has been broken by a race known as the Gorn. You are on patrol in the Gamma Sector of the Denibian Cluster when you receive a distress call from Earth Outpost Number 4. In space battle, you must defend the Earth Outpost from this deadly threat, but it's not as easy as it sounds. Before you can even face the enemy invaders, you have to safely land your ship on the planet's surface. This is your mission. This is your challenge. This is Space Battle from Dave Newman. So says AtariAge.com. And today we are looking at it on Homebrew Review, courtesy of Mr. Mega Man Fan. So if you like what we do on this channel, please subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, share it with your friends. All of those things help the channel out. As you can see, my first attempt to land on the planet's surface was a failure, but you know the old saying, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. If it wasn't obvious up to this point, this is an Atari 2600, or if you prefer Atari video computer system game, Atari VCS, the original console. Not the brand new one that they made a couple of years ago, which is basically a souped up computer in a nice shell that resembles an old Atari console. That's not what I'm talking about. Maybe they've released it as a digital download for that modern iteration, but this is a cartridge available for the original Atari 2600 video computer system. You can buy it at atariage.com right now. As a matter of fact, I just checked and it is still available. Although, like many of the games I've featured on Homebrew Review, you have a try before you buy option. You can go to the front page of AtariH.com, click on 2600 on the left side, and type in Space Battle in the search bar. It will pull up a description of the game that you can click on, and a download ROM link is available there as well. So feel free to sample this one with the emulator of your choice, the Stella emulator, the Open Emu emulator, RetroArc, or anything else that you use. You can sample this one first. And you might want to because I'm going to tell you right now, it's a little bit on the challenging side. Not ridiculous to the point that I don't want to play it, but also not so easy that a newcomer would immediately think, wow, I want to plunk down my money for this. When you have to land on the planet's surface, the landing area is constantly moving and it's very small. And if you don't land your ship exactly pixel for pixel on the pad, you blow up. You can't even be one millimeter off. You have to be dead on. So just getting to the point where you can shoot at these enemy waves is in itself quite the feat. Then there's the matter of your constantly depleting fuel supply, and I don't mean it goes down slowly over time. I mean it disappears quicker than a mother. You don't have any time to take out these aliens before you run out of fuel. If you don't wipe them out fast with perfectly timed shots, the Space Invaders kind of shots where you have to shoot where they aren't instead of where they are, you're going to run out of fuel, and guess what? You blow up when you run out of fuel, so two ways you can die already. You can die by not landing on the planet's surface, you can die by running out of fuel, and of course, they're shooting at you, they're attacking you, so you can die that way too. A lot of death in space battle. Get used to it when you start playing this game. It's just, it should be considered a timer. It's like the countdown timer on a level of Super Mario Brothers. When it runs out, you die. You want to finish before it runs out, or you're screwed. I have no other way to say it other than that. The only other thing I found I could do with my ship is activate a shield, but it's a very, very weird shield in that it juggles an enemy missile that's been dropped on you, and then you die anyway. So what even is the point of the shield? I am feeling rather dense when it comes to this because it should allow you to like destroy the incoming missile or bounce it off or do something that would help you. Instead, it just immobilizes it for a second or two 
and it plows into you anyway. But with those two things aside, it's still playable and it's still fun. It's just that you have to clear every wave as fast as you possibly can before death finds you. And the waves take two different forms. One is just aliens moving in a straight line in groups of two or three from left to right or right to left. And then there's these secondary wave enemies. I would call them the bosses, if such a thing is possible, because you go through three different stages. You go through landing on the planet's surface, you go through those alien waves, and then you get these bosses, and then you reset to having to land on the planet's surface again. These bosses take a lot of hits. Now you do get the option to rapid fire shots. If you hit the button repeatedly, it takes the missile that you fired and fires it again. Although if it hasn't traveled all the way across the screen, you're just replacing it with a fresh missile and you're not getting the old missile to continue traveling. It's like Gorf in that respect where you could rapid fire but each time you rapid fired, you were erasing the old shot that you had just fired. So keep that in mind when the boss enemies are at close range, you can rapid fire them. But if they're way at the top of the screen and you shoot at them, then you shoot again. The first shot that you shoot is no longer going to be there. So you might miss entirely by trying to rapid fire. That's complicated, I know. But it's a mechanic that's very familiar to early arcade games because I suspect they didn't have enough processing power to keep drawing multiple shots on the screen at one time. So if you fired another shot, you lost your first shot. Galaga, this is not. You cannot fire multiple shots at one time and take out multiple things moving towards you at one time and then get rated on a percentage of shots that you landed when you finally get a game over. I don't think there's any such mechanic in Space Battle. It doesn't keep track, and you probably wouldn't want it to keep track because, quite frankly, you're going to miss a lot. So all of these things factor into Space Battle and your consideration of whether or not to make a purchase of this game. It may seem like I've been a little harsh, but I actually still recommend it. It is fun to play. It's... Not very accessible in terms of the old platform that it's on and the limited number of people that might buy a game in a physical form for that platform. And it's also not very accessible in terms of the high degree of difficulty when it comes to mastering the game and getting a higher score than you did the previous time before. And there's certainly no goal other than getting a higher score. You don't have any end stage boss that you can reach. You don't have any game over cutscene that tells you you completed the game. You've got to set your own goals and beat them. And if you're prepared for that, Space Battle may be for you. I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan. Thanks for watching.